In college, I took a measurement and instrumentation class in which we learned not only how to conduct experiments, but also how to present our results and write reports. One of the case studies in that class was the Challenger accident, and here is one of the memos that were written to say that they could launch on that cold January day. This was one of the first places where I learned the importance of presentation of information. It doesn't matter how good your analyses are if you're not able to communicate your intent or the desired result to your audience. The second place I learned that importance was in my first engineering job at Martin Marietta, later Lockheed Martin, when I was a structural analyst. And I would run analyses all the time. And let me show you one of the problems that I would often encounter. So for example, I have this static analysis that I have already created and run. Let me go to my analyses and studies dialog box. This is where I like to enter results mode because you select the analysis, then click the review results button. And I'm going to create a window of my stress results for von Mises. And I'm going to change this to megapascals. And I also like to change the display options to continuous tone. I like the way that the colors blend there. And also let's deform it. One thing to note, this deformation is going to be enlarged. This scaling percentage can be confusing to a lot of people. This is not actual deformation. If you wanted actual deformation, you would uncheck this box and change the scaling to a value of one. The default is 10% scaling. This can be misleading. And again, most people don't understand it, so I like to point it out. All models have a size to them. And the way that Creo Parametric calculates that size is it puts a box around your model that is just big enough to enclose the entire model. And then it measures the cross diagonal length of that box. 10% of that cross diagonal length is the maximum deformation that you're going to see when you generate these results. So again, if you're dealing with an audience that doesn't understand that, I highly recommend that you turn off the scaling and either use a scaling of one, or if you need to enlarge it, 10x, 100x, whatever. Uh, but again, this scaling is one of the areas in which you can confuse your audience, so be aware of that. I'm only using it because I've just communicated this information to you. I normally do not use that scaling percentage. So I will click OK and show. And here we have our von Mises stresses. And we take a look around the model, we see it. And what I would encounter with a lot of managers I was dealing with, if I presented them results like this, they would see these areas of red and they're like, oh wait, we've got big problems. We've got to make a change. We need, either need to make it thicker there, maybe throw in some fillets. Do we have to go to a different, usually more expensive material? And that's the kind of reaction that I would get early on in the first couple years that I was doing structural analysis. What's really important, as we all know, is to take a look at the actual numbers here. So again, this is von Mises stress in megapascals. This is a titanium alloy, which has a yield strength of 880 megapascals. But we can see the maximum value here is 610. So in order to communicate the results properly to people, I recommend you do one of two different things. First off, if we go in here to the View tab, and I am, oops, excuse me, the Format tab, we can edit the legend. And right now we can see that we have our values in here. And I'm going to change the maximum value here to that 880 megapascals. At the same time, I always like to take the minimum value and change it to a value zero. Oops, let me do that again. Change the minimum before the maximum. And here we have some nice uh, even units in here. And that way, now when I click the OK button, we take a look at the model 
and you could explain to a manager who might not understand structural analysis or maybe someone else who doesn't understand all the intricacies of mechanical engineering that, hey, we don't see any red in here. Our peak here, 880, uh, this is our yield strength, but our maximum value in the model is only 610. So we are good to go. So this is one of the ways in which you can help explain the results to people. Let me show you one of the other different ways. I'm going to exit out of here and I'm not going to save these results here. The second method that I like to use is failure index plots and that involves changing your material properties. Here we have our material assignment. I'm going to click edit definition from the mini toolbar and in the material assignment dialog box it's using this titanium alloy. To change the material I'm going to click on the more button and right now I'm using titanium alloy from the old legacy materials. Starting in Creo Parametric 4.0 you have the access to some of the Granta material database. And I'll go to my non-ferrous metals. And in here we have our titanium alloy. Let's click on this and I'm going to choose to, actually I'm going to choose the edit button from the ribbon. And in the material definition dialog box, we have a drop down list where we can specify three different failure criterion. The first is modified more. Maybe you remember your more circle from your engineering mechanics training. But if I choose modified more, that requires me to enter in the tensile ultimate stress and the compressive ultimate stress. The second choice that we have here for a failure criterion is the Tresca criterion, also known as the maximum shear stress criteria. And with the Tresca criterion, you have to enter in the tensile yield stress. And this is typically used for brittle materials like ceramics in which you expect them to yield due to shear. And I believe that it uses uh, maximum shear stress can be half of the tensile yield strength. The third choice that you have in here is the von Mises criterion, also known as the distortion energy criterion. And von Mises, I really like. This is typically used for metals. The von Mises stress gives you sort of an idealized value of the stress in your model. It essentially adds up all your normal stresses and then factors in all the different shear stresses. And the distortion energy criterion assumes that uh, the yield is going to happen when that von Mises stress is over the value of the tensile yield strength. And I happen to have the value for the titanium alloy yield strength in megapascal. So I can use this drop down list to change my set of units. And in this case over here, I can type in the value. In this case, it'll be 880 megapascals. Here is another thing to note about this. So in this case here, I'm using the actual value of the tensile yield strength. Let's say though that you have a margin of safety or a factor of safety that you want to incorporate in here. You can do that. So for example, let's say that I have a margin of safety of 25%, 1.25. What I can do is I can divide this value by that particular number in order to figure out what the number I want to use to compare against. So for example, let's say I had that 25% uh, value for my margin of safety. Rather than using 880 over here, I could use a value, I think it's 704. I haven't done the math, but let's assume that that is right. And this way, when I'm generating failure index plots later on, I'll be comparing to the yield strength with whatever margins of safety or factors of safety built into this. All right, this is great. I'm actually going to compare it to the actual yield strength. So let me change that to 880 and I'm going to save this and let me save it out to where I store all my stuff, uh, my modified materials. I have a folder for that. So I will click OK and let me then for my materials, I'm going to access that. And here's the titanium alloy. Let me add it to the model. And I can also click on it 
and choose that I, actually this is should be good, let me click the OK button. And now in my material assignment, I'm using my titanium alloy with my failure criterion defined. Let's click the OK button out of here. Since I changed the material, I now have to rerun the analyses. I will go to the Analyses and Studies dialog box, and I'm going to rerun both of these. Uh, just to let you know what these different analyses are. First off, I have a load case that I'm running for the first one uh, with an angular velocity, and it's about 1570. And in my second one, I have a second load set where I'm using a 10G acceleration and I have an angular velocity of about 2000. So let me click OK out of here. I'm going to rerun both of these. This is going to take a few moments and so I'm going to put in an edit and then we'll come back to take a look at the results. And I'm back. Both analyses have finished running. By the way, I want to mention what you should check in your .rpt file. Uh, so here I have the analysis that I just finished running. If I click on this button, it will open up a dialog box with the RPT file, that's short for the report file. And I'm going to scroll up in here just to show you some of the different things that you get in here. So for example, one thing I like to check, hey, how many elements were generated? In this particular case, the model ran with just under 13,000 elements. For speed, I ran single pass adaptive, and I always like to check the max polynomial order on the second pass. And here it went to a maximum polynomial order of six, which is good. If you see this going up to a maximum polynomial order of nine on the second pass, there's a pretty good chance that you did not get convergence. So you'll want to run the model again and take a look at the polynomial orders and see where you had elements going up to a value of 9 and maybe adding some different mesh controls in there in order to make sure that you got convergence. And then scrolling down in here are uh, some other things that you should check. Here we have, you know, you can take a look at the information about the mass of the model. And another thing I like to point out is that uh, we have our various different measures in here so you can see the other different peak values and another thing good thing to check is the total load applied in the model you just want to do a sanity check and if you happen to know what the loads that you ran in the analysis you want to make sure that they're the same loads that were applied during the analysis run and another last thing to check in here you can see your memory usage and then use this information in order to change the ram allocation on the next run just to make sure that you are using efficient computer resources all right, now let's take a look at some results. I've got my analysis selected. Let's click on the icon to review results. And for my first window over here, now that I've run the model with a failure criterion, I can use the drop down list to change the quantity from stress to failure index. And let's go to display options. I prefer continuous tone. I'm going to show it deformed and I'm going to turn off the percentage because the first time I take a look at results, I like to sh see it with a scaling of one and let's overlay the undeformed on there. That's good. I will click OK and show. And now I can see that we have a peak value of 1.12 and with failure index, anything with a value greater than one indicates where your model is yielding. Let's go to the Format tab and then choose Edit. And let's change our minimum value to 0, the maximum value to 1, and click the OK button. And the colors adjust, and that way I can see where I'm having yield in the model. And again, this is fairly easy for non-technical people to understand. You basically show them, hey, anytime that you have something greater than one, that is bad. And in this case here, we can see the peak value. You can also show them, hey, any areas that are in red are areas where we have trouble and we need to do something to improve the geometry. And so by either adjusting the legend to use the maximum allowable stress 
or by using a failure index plot, you're able to communicate your intent to your audience. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowinchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.